Okay, well, uh, on kind of the, the front of uh, Web 2 players getting involved in Web 3 and making big mistakes along the way, uh, PayPal <laughs> overpaid, well, really, their, their partner, their payments partner, Paxos, this is kind of poorly oriented because you can't really read it with the logo back there, uh, overpaid more than $500,000 in the largest Bitcoin transaction fee ever in USD terms, that is. Um, so basically what happened is there's a whole lot of people that just kind of watch blockchain for, for various different things and even automated alerts and stuff like that. And one pops up with, hey, someone paid more than $500,000. They overpaid by, what is that, 479,000 to X what the fee needed to be. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, the way that Bitcoin fees and, and most blockchain fees work is they don't really have anything to do with the size of or the amount of money being sent or the amount of Bitcoin being sent, but they have to do with the size of the data of the transaction itself. So sometimes uh, there can be more expensive transactions simply because... Uh, uh, there's a whole bunch of inputs being fed into it. Say you're taking a whole bunch of accounts and simplifying them into one into one wallet. Uh, that will be a large transaction as far as the data is involved, and larger transactions will charge more. Nowhere near this kind of magnitude. So right away, everyone could kind of tell, like, yeah, there's there's a there's something wrong here. This wasn't just like uh, congestion because the blockchain has been congested for a while, uh, but this isn't just congestion. Someone messed up. So a lot of people thought- The notion of congestion causing- You're muted. The notion of congestion causing this size of a transaction fee- I know. At this Well, no one thought it pretty is, quickly. Exactly, is, exactly. It's funny. So most people just guessed fat finger, you know, just someone put too many too many zeros on a, on a transaction or something else like that. Um, and then pretty quickly realized it was a- programmatic like there, there was something wrong within the software itself and I, i've 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 you know worked on some some software uh, attached to wallets where you have to actually write like create all the pieces of a transaction and if you don't know what you're doing you can really easily screw up i i, I made the assumption i remember at one point that uh if you've got say outputs of uh, or inputs of say half a bitcoin and then you have an output of a quarter of a bitcoin the assumption is that the rest is going to go back, right? Right. In yeah. reality, the rest is the transaction fee. So you have to account for all of the different outputs that you want to create, and whatever is left over will be the fee. It was. I assumed that that's what it was in this case. I don't know that it actually was, but it was definitely the. You know, it was eventually figured out that this was going into a PayPal wallet. It was done by Paxos. You know, by them doing it, and then Paxos put out a press release saying. You know, we screwed up. Uh, it only impacted our corporate operations. End users aren't going to be impacted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, could be pretty devastating news. Half a million dollar mistake. Oops, like that program. It's a lot of money to just lose. Just screwed, yeah. Right. But the Bitcoin community is kind of amazing. Uh, the they pool are. immediately announced the, the pool that, that mined the transaction immediately announced hey, uh, we just got a 20 Bitcoin uh, 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 fee here, and it was obviously a mistake. Uh, we're going to give 48 hours for whoever it belongs to, to actually kind of speak up and say, it's me. And pretty quickly, the community actually figured out there was Paxos. They connected with each other and 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 F2, P, F2 pool uh, gave them the money back. And a lot of people are like, why? Lop had a great tweet explaining why. He actually, when he worked at Bitco, some, something similar happened where someone made an 80 Bitcoin fee mistake, which would be, what, $4 million now? Um, at the time, obviously, in 2016, Bitcoin was a lot less expensive. So again, still, this is the most expensive in dollar terms. Um, but at the time, it was reversed because uh, there is enough transparency. You don't even know, need to know who the other party is, but you know who it came from. So you could just voluntarily say, well, I know this is a mistake. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to them. In, their, in this case, they wanted to actually talk to who it was and figure out what was going on. And on, I'm glad. Uh, I love the way he put it. Bitcoin is an adversarial network. But on the flip side, it's also a cooperative network. Yeah, I love that too. It's something that um, we talk a lot about that if there that there are more of us that want to do the right thing. You know, everybody's so worried about scams and and mm -hmm. people like that. But it's like there are more of us that want to do the right thing than the wrong thing. Can you go back actually just mm -hmm. for a minute to that mm -hmm. tweet? Mm -hmm. He also says at the end. Um, 
miners are humans too, and they realize that people make mistakes. Exactly. While returning egregious transaction fees makes for, well, retaining egregious transaction fees makes for a nice short-term profit, returning those funds is the humane decision. Yes. And that's, that's absolutely right. And that is why Bitcoin is such a great community, is mm -hmm. that because, you know, there's this, it's it's really the one community in crypto where the spirit of of coopetition has pretty much you know held throughout. I think that there are other kind of mm -hmm. aspects of crypto where there's excessive competition and mm -hmm. not enough collaboration. Mm -hmm. But you know the stakes are high when it comes to Bitcoin, and so people are you know trying to make the best of it. Well, they're high when it comes to. Bitcoin, but they're also high when it comes to just overall Web3 adoption. And they're so really high in theory. They're high in theory in terms true. of the stakes of what it means for the future of the internet. Exactly. But they're not high in practice no. in terms of the actual dollars and cents that people have invested. Right. And right. that's the difference. Yep. It's that skin in the game idea. And that's sort of sad because yeah. the the dollars that we may make or lose in Bitcoin are much less significant than the knowledge that the web has the potential to retain and impart and make available. And that is really what Agreed. is in danger right now and what Web3 offers the solution to. Uh, I just have to say one thing about this uh, story and really the friend tech story before it, it was the it was a comment in that Twitter thread which is ready for mass adoption <laughs> laugh face um, which <laughs> and that was the main criticism that Brett Weinstein said to us when we were on his show as well which is just that this technology while cool and important still is very intimidating to people and it's stories like this that really highlight why people are intimidated and somewhat rightly so. And I think that that's a, a criticism that we all need to face and address. True. And and the answer that is too often bantered about in the crypto industry is, you know, take personal responsibility, do your own research, kind of like sucks to be you mm -hmm. when mistakes like this happen or that, that they're, they're resolved just through uh, uh, that that fortune, cooperation, yeah, yeah because, but that that only is the case for people who rise to that level, for those yeah. enormous, you know, who either have a large enough following or it's a large enough transaction, et cetera. But what about for people who don't meet any of those oh, yeah, criteria? Yeah, I made the mistake and lost 50 bucks in a transaction fee when I didn't need to, no one returned it to me, that's for sure. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So how, how are we going to handle those things? Mm -hmm. It's very urgent question for us to solve. Well, and it also just kind of suggests that in some terms we're early. <laughs> we're, 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 we're still early because those questions haven't been answered yet, you know. And I'm really glad that there's the good nature that we'll try to, that will as often as possible overcome uh, uh, and and try to signal to the rest of the world, no, this, this community wants you. And mm -hmm. if you make mistakes, you'll be forgiven for them. But you're right. It, we're no, early, it's but not, it's also in. gone on for such a long time that right. we're kind of at that point of now it, where it's kind of like, you know. What are we waiting for? We need to overcome this or mm -hmm. it's not going mm -hmm. to make it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, 